Mr. Beret had earned the respect of his fellow crew members, but that didn't stop security from seeking his downfall. It all started when he took a simple trip with his new cheeseburger friend to say hello to the AI. He was sporting a security mod suit that he had built himself after a cheeky lawyer looking for new clients slipped him a roboticist's ID. He knew Mr. Beret couldn't help himself. It would only be a matter of time before he found himself in the brig. Security raised a bitch fit about the meatball and subsystems rendezvous, and soon enough had Mr. Beret in cuffs, while his bestie, leaving Trader, skipped the joint. Mr. Beret had the sec officer caught up in the funny tubes for a while, but he was only delaying the inevitable. So there he was, locked up in the brig for high trespassing, when the lawyer came in to collect his dues. He had traded the mime sex suit to the warden for a measly two minutes off his brig time, then took his 200 credit fee and left the imprisoned impersonator to his time. Something broke inside Mr. Beret. It wasn't the two minute brig time, it was his prized sex suit being sold for less time than it took to make it. When the warden was distracted with whatever else was destroying the station, Mr. Beret scooped up McGriff, the prison head's furry companion, and walked straight out of security, dog in hand. After stuffing McGriff into a toolbox and throwing it into a random locker, he wrote a ransom letter that read something like this. Are you threatening me with McGriff? Where did you put it? Hello, Warden. You want the mod suit for McGriff. May I get mine shielded? Sure, CMO. <sighs> Fine, Mime. Where is McGriff first? Hmm. No, no. You bring me McGriff. I hand you the Sekmo. You wouldn't oh, dare. Oh, God. Mime, no! Okay, okay. Obviously, the warden was going to double-cross him. Mr. Bray saw this coming. That's why he went as far as making an engineer surprise out of a loaf of pug. You're under arrest! He kidnapped McGriff! Mr. Beret continues to negotiate with the warden, while he's brought to the highest security cell possible to be tortured. No, no, no. I don't think you understand, Mime. I can make a field lobotomy. You tell me where he is, and I won't do it. I do not negotiate with terrorists, Mime. Where's the grip? Well, CMO? Hmm. I have an idea. Brain scratch torture. What do you I want? Scratch to? their brain. Hmm. They speak. Scratch, huh? Lobotomy. Oh, I have tools. Oh, good. The warden slips himself on soap in some sort of twisted reverse psychological torture, but this only encourages the mime to stay strong. Take him to the bridge then. Med Bay Bridge. Unless they speak. Right now. This was one of the only empty threats security would give. While he never got a lobotomy, the tasing, the pepper spraying, the cutting and searing of flesh were all followed through with. Well, Mime, are you gonna speak? They should have realized the Herculean task of forcing a Mime to speak is a fruitless endeavor. He was bound and gagged like a politician's plaything before the warden strapped an electrocution device to his chest. Do you know how much pain this gives? Well, I didn't want to do this, but you leave us no choice. The tasing began, but all that flashed through Mr. Beret's mind was a pug-stuffed toolbox, so he was laughing his ass off behind his muzzle. <clears throat> I may be a doctor, but McGriff was a close friend. Speak or die. The mothic surgeon begins flaying the flesh off Mr. Beret's legs. Speak, scum! Keep the cuffs on him. Yep. We gotta take his filthy jacket off. Are you ready to speak? The surgeon takes another 15 pounds off of Mr. Beret's max deadlift. Speak! Where is he? How are you this stubborn? The warden exclaims, missing the irony of torturing a mime to speak. Fuck! 
Speak! Wait, oh. All right, Mime. I'm giving you one chance. Mr. Beret is handed a pen and paper, but only gives away that McGriff is in a toolbox, just because it's funny. What does it say? It's in a toolbox, Mime! Oh God, that's terrible. I know he's dead anyway. He's been in a toolbox for so long. <laughs> it's okay. Where, Mime, where? I want answers. But Mr. Bray wasn't giving any. He explained he had nothing to lose and he had McGriff over the warden's head still. You scumbag. Who would do that to McGriff? <laughs> this scum, for a sex suit. You psycho! I'm... horrified. Mime, I know he's dead. He's in a fucking toolbox! So you tell me where he is now, or I'll open every single toolbox in the station. Now! I say we avenge McGriff. The CMO convinces the warden to vent Mr. Beret into space. <sighs> Do it. Do it! All right, Moth. Mr. Beret was vented into space. However, he had practiced his skills just earlier today, and he was back inside in a matter of seconds. He runs into the warden again, but thinks quick on his feet, and shoots himself further into the jail. Now he's bawling full time in the brig, but not like the whiny traitor that got caught with his pants down, but like a six foot five NBA player that was convicted of spouse abuse. He used a trick he learned from another famous mime, showing a note to the AI, who let him out just as the escape shuttle docked with the station. The emergency shuttle has docked with the station. Mr. Beret found McGriff in plain sight outside of the locker and the toolbox. That's one tough pug. Nevertheless, he scoops him back up and grabs a nearby crowbar as a plan B when negotiations eventually go south. Just as he reaches the shuttle, the CMO tackles the mime in a last ditch effort to save McGriff. But Mr. Beret was quicker. He placed an invisible wall between no. them before lobotomizing McGriff in one swing. He wanted to kill McGriff in front of the warden. But things got too hairy, so he had to settle for parading the deceased doggy around the escape shuttle. Finally, the warden would see what became of McGriff. How could you? You sick fucking bastard! I, I couldn't negotiate with you. That's that's not what McGriff would have wanted. It's it's not, bastard. He knows I should have done it. He knows. He would have been disappointed, right? How could you? The warden pepper sprays, beats, and flashes Mr. Bray senseless as they flew off the nanotrace in HQ. Fucker, I'll let your family down.